So this is the Samsung Galaxy Book 4G LTE. Now I have here the Intel Core i5 version. Been using this for a few months now. And today I bring you my review and full gaming and emulation performance test. Now the good thing about this laptop is it has dropped in price since launch. So 699 from Samsung Official or 499 from Curry's right now. Or with Vodafone, you could pick this up on a pay monthly contract, which would include a SIM card and data packages. Now, first thing I have to say about this laptop is you have this very nice, complete aluminum body with a thin profile that's 15.4 millimeters at its thickest point going down to 10 millimeters at its thinnest and it weighs only 1.55 kgs so easy and light to carry around. Now open it up to a nice wide working space. You have a full pro keyboard with numerical pad along with a nice large trackpad. So loving the overall build quality but unfortunately the keys are not backlit so that's uh, a slight letdown but otherwise comfortable to type on with some decent travel and the keys have this uh, textured finish to it so loving the overall build quality it's clean durable and looks good too so the galaxy book comes with a 15.6 inch full hd led anti-glare display with 300 nits of peak brightness so the screen looks great love the colors and contrast but that brightness is a bit underwhelming if you take it out the office. So if you're working outdoors, 300 nits of peak brightness um, is going to underwhelm you slightly. But for indoor use, it's perfectly fine. Now, I do like that you've got narrow bezels on the side, giving you a decent screen to body ratio. And there is a tiny 720p webcam on the top bezel, which you can barely see. And nothing special about the webcam itself. It's a 720p webcam. Pretty much what you get with most laptops nowadays. Um, perfectly fine for video chatting, Zoom calls, etc. Furthermore, this laptop is powered by the Intel Core i5 1135G7 quad core clocked at 2.4 gigahertz with a 4.2 gigahertz turbo. For graphics, we have the Intel Iris Xe shared graphics with 8 gigs of LPDDR4 onboard RAM, so not upgradable. But you do have a 256 gig NVMe SSD storage with a spare SSD slot supporting one terabyte. So storage can be upgraded and expanded. You also have micro SD expansion to sweeten the deal. Now, when I first got this laptop, it came with Windows 10 Professional pre-installed. And after one week's usage, the free update to Windows 11 was available. Now on the left side of the laptop, we have an LED power indicator, USB Type-C 3.2 port, a full-size HDMI, a full-size USB 3 port, and we have another Type-C 3.2 port. Both Type-C ports will let you fast charge at 65 watts, and they both also support display out. And on the other side, you can see we have a hybrid SIM tray, which can take one microSD card and one 4G LTE Nano SIM card. Next to it, you will find a combo headphone and microphone jack, another full-size USB 3 port, and a Kensington lock. Now, general performance of this laptop is pretty good. You can undertake more or less any task with a decent performance. Um, no slowdown, no lag, no issues. And even streaming videos and movies on this looks great. And even the sound quality is amazing. Um, you've got stereo speakers. They are bottom firing speakers um, and they do support Dolby Atmos sound. Now, if you are wondering about the gaming performance, what's it like playing games on this unit? Well, this laptop has Intel shared graphics, so not really designed to be a gaming laptop. However, I do want to still show you what this laptop is capable of. So I do want to quickly show you the graphics settings. So you can see DirectX 11, 1080p Full HD, 60 Hertz. Most of the settings are on very high or high. So GTA 5, very high to high graphics. Resolution 1080p and we're achieving around 30 frames per second and that's a pretty constant 30 frames per second Now to further test the gaming performance we are going to check out some emulation beginning with PS2 so Fight Night Round 3 PS2 emulation, four times resolution, and you can see it's uh, playing pretty well at 59 frames per second, uh, pretty smooth and constant. So yeah, quite impressed with the PlayStation 2 performance. Oh, 
All right, so next up, time for some Switch emulation. So this game is running at around 43 to 42 um, frames per second. It is fluctuating, going up and down. Um, the game does play. I'm not going to say it plays well. You can see all those scratches and blurriness on the screen that just randomly appears. I mean, the sound is in check. The sound is good. But the graphics are definitely not right. So Switch games seem to play well, depending on what game you're trying to emulate. Um, generally, you'll get around 97% um, emulation speed. And that's at the native 720p slash full HD resolution. Um, there are some tweaks that you can play around with to slightly improve the gameplay. But otherwise, you can expect around 40 to 50 frames per second. So not super stable frame rate, uh, but the game, as you saw, was playable. So PSP emulation playing Def Jam, Fight for New York, one of my favorite retro classics. And this game played absolutely fine with 10x rendering resolution. Now this laptop does have a cooling fan, um, which switches itself on and off, um, especially during graphic intensive tasks. But I have to say it's rather on the quieter side. Now let's talk about the battery life. You have a 54 watt hour battery and Samsung claims you can achieve around 10.9 hours of battery life. Now realistically, I was achieving between seven to eight hours of battery life with mixed usage. So office applications, streaming movies and videos from Netflix and YouTube, that gave me around seven to eight hours of usage. So I was achieving around seven to eight hours of battery life. Now, if you were to play GTA 5 nonstop and depending on your screen brightness, resolution, volume, etc., you can achieve between two to three hours of battery life. Now, I am happy that you get a 65 watt charger included in the box which manages to get you from zero to 100% in just one hour. Now the Galaxy Book has both Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 on board, but we also have 4G LTE connectivity, which works very well. And Windows 11 Home is snappy in operation. Um, I really do like the new look. It's almost reminiscent to the Mac OS, which is a good thing. Windows really needed this change. So Windows 11 is very nice to use and even better that we got a free upgrade to Windows 11 with this laptop. So plenty of power and performance to edit videos, play some AAA games, surf the web, email, social media, all the usual stuff. And this laptop offers a pretty good experience, does not feel laggy or underpowered at any stage whilst testing. Audio quality from the stereo speakers are also quite good. They are located at the bottom of the laptop, but do deliver a maximum power output of four watts combined, offering a pretty balanced sound, and they do support Dolby Atmos. Now onto the benchmarks. So we have a CPU pass mark score of 10,153. And in Cinebench, we achieved a CPU multi-score of 4,408. And here are your Geekbench scores. Single core, 1342, and multi-core, 4973. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved 553K. So there you have it, guys. That was the Samsung Galaxy Book 4G LTE. And here are my thoughts in a nutshell. The laptop is very well made. It feels durable, it's slim and light. You've got narrow bezels, big full HD display, nice wide keyboard with numerical pad, great connectivity, ports and expansion. The laptop runs cool and offers a very good everyday performance. Now another plus point or advantage of this laptop is the Samsung Galaxy ecosystem. So if you have a Samsung phone, the ecosystem lets you quick share with easy Bluetooth connections. You've got features like second screen, auto sync your Samsung notes and lots, lots more. So if you're already on the Samsung ecosystem, um, this laptop will further enhance your experience. Now there are a few drawbacks that I did encounter, which I would like to mention. There was no fingerprint reader and I really wish there was one. Webcam has no privacy cover. Now this is not a deal breaker, uh, rather a preference. It's easy to pick up a stick on privacy cover. But personally, I just wish all laptops came standard with a privacy cover. Now the screen is a little dull for outdoor use, but the indoor screen brightness is perfectly fine. The 720p webcam is mediocre, not anything special, but okay for Skype, video calls, Zoom, etc. 
Another thing I missed was backlit keys. You've got such a nice big keyboard. It's a shame that they did not include any backlights. Even basic white backlights would have been amazing. Now touchpad is a bit weird. Even though it's nice and big, it's a bit temperamental at times. Um, it inaccurately jumps on occasion when you don't want it to. Not sure if a firmware update will fix this soon, um, but I do find myself using an external mouse. Other than that, I'm happy to see that we have micro SD expansion. We've got an HDMI port, but you've also got display out via USB type C, which I find so useful. I just hook it up to my monitor and it charges the laptop at the same time as mirroring. Another point, which is not a real major con, so I did not put it on the list, but the RAM is on board. So no room for upgrading the RAM in the future. So bottom line, when this laptop released a few months ago, the price was a little high for what you're getting, especially considering the drawbacks. But a few months down the line, you can get this right now for only 499. It might be a limited offer, but it's valid right now. And for that price, this is quite an impressive laptop. Now, you certainly won't be complaining about the build quality, the portability, the powerful performance, the amazing connectivity, um, the fact that you've got 4G LTE SIM card support, which means you can have your data on the go anywhere you like and a pretty decent battery life to go with it. Yes, you have a few drawbacks to consider, but at this lower end price, I can still recommend this laptop. Any questions, you know what to do. Meanwhile, links will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.